Well, good, e good afternoon. What day is this? Where are we? <laughs> Welcome to our gentle worship service, a special worship uh, designed to uh, be quiet but not lack passion, a service to celebrate Holy Communion in a place where it is safe to do so, meaning there's no shushing allowed, and uh, that's the rule. So it's good to, to, uh, to know that and to celebrate that together and enjoy this time of worship. Um, we will continue with the order of services printed in the bulletin, and uh, we'll start at the top of the page that uh, you turn over, and it's number two. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join in saying, I have decided to follow Jesus. 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 No turning back, no turning back. Though I may wander, still I will follow. Though I may wander, I still will You may be seated. I, I forgot, I intended a special announcement here. We have esteemed guests here today uh, named Jack and Carrie Mitten who were united in marriage yesterday before this altar. There's Jack. Yeah, I'm so excited. You're welcome. Uh, he didn't know he was marrying the church though. That was a bit of a surprise. So not only is he not going on a honeymoon, but he's gotten three jobs since he arrived here this morning. <laughs> So it's a welcome to both of you. It sure is nice to have you with us today. Very special. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new birth, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together. Lord, listen to your children praying. i 
listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Our text for this afternoon is recorded for us in the Gospel of St. John the 13th chapter, reading verses 31 through 35. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart gathered in this place be acceptable unto you our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also must love one another. You know, you could get the impression when you read about Jesus in the scriptures that Jesus was not too fond of commandments. I mean, his resistance to the Pharisees seems to indicate that. But seems is the operative word. To love his heavenly father Jesus had to love the commandments of God, and that is all there is to it. It was not so much the commandments themselves. It was how those commandments were being misused as instruments of power and control over others. He com- he's actually summarized the Ten Commandments and his love of those commandments into just two. Number one, you shall love the Lord your God with all your strength and with all your heart, with all your soul and mind. And you should, number two, love your neighbor as yourself. Regardless of this, Jesus himself only gave one commandment in his earthly ministry. And that's the one I read a moment ago. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also must love one another. Ironically, I find nowadays that some Christians get a little tired of this proclamation. Jesus, it's amazing to me. My mother-in-law died not too long ago, and it is in a town where I served as a pastor at one time, and a, ex, a member, was an ex-member of mine, came up to me at the funeral home and said, you know, I'm convicted of my own sin. Each and every day, I know I'm a sinner. I do not deserve the mercy of God, and I need a church. He's, she, he's fine. I need a church where I can go, and, and, and they can tell me that each and every Sunday, convict me of my sin and yell at me about it. Of course, my comment to him was, it doesn't sound like you need that. (laughs) Actually, I think you need the love stuff. But he just got tired of this, this love language that he heard from the pulpit that he thought he heard too much. Perhaps that's because love has gotten a bad rap in our society. Popular culture always reduces the word to a feeling, a warm, fuzzy emotion. We love our cars. We love our cats. We, I don't love cats. I, I am a dog guy, and, and I don't love cats, but you might. I don't know. Is anybody a cat lover here? Are you kidding me? I used to have respect for you. Okay, anyway, <laughs> we love our stuff based upon what those things can do for us. We love others. We love our spouses. We love our children. We maybe even love our in-laws, but uh, that's because of the way they treat us. Notice the utility that's attached to that kind of love. It's about me. 
isn't it? It's what love can do for me or what others can do for me. And that's how I kind of restrict them. And that's a nice little emotion simply because of what people and things add to our life and our well-being. But Jesus came with a whole nother thing. He just came with a whole radical idea and notion as to what love really is about. He knew that something we often forget. He knew that real love only is discovered when we extend ourselves to others. To love as Jesus loved means to extend ourselves in service to others. In this sense, love is the highest and the best thing that the Christian can do. To love as Jesus loved means we love not for what others can do for us, but what we can do for others. And as these two can attest, when you do premarital counseling, you inevitably talk at some point about, you know, why are you getting married? So often, the answer is, well, what she does or what he does for me. And I tell them they're wrong. Get out of my office. No, I don't do that. I tell them they're wrong. I tell them that if you really want a marriage that lasts, if you want a relationship that lasts, it better be about what you can give to each other and not about what you're going to get. And it is so true. It is so very true. Not for what we get, but for what we can give. When Jesus asked that series of questions of Peter, if he loved the Lord, he followed with a question, that question with a command, care for my sheep. Love for Jesus, again, is not about getting, it's about giving. Christian love is different than our secular culture offers. It's not an emotion. Think of it as a direction. Just as Jesus gave himself as the way to God, and not some kind of a Garmin or, or map. He gave himself, so too, loving as directed as Jesus loved in his life, death, and resurrection is the way we will see things happen. It is the way that the church can express itself in the deepest way possible, and in that way, maybe help undo some of the harm that the culture has rendered to the word love. Thanks be to God. Amen. You're not allowed to shush him either. Oh, we're going to do the Apostles' Creed. Where am I going? <laughs> if you can stand, would you please? We'll confess our faith according to the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for this holy meal that we are about to share. May it help us to be more loving and to follow you more faithfully. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for friends and neighbors and family. Teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Amen. Wonderful God, thank you for the trees and the animals, for the sun and moon, and for the whole world you have made. Amen. Loving God, we know that you hear our prayers. And we ask you to take care of the people we love. Thank you for loving us. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We love them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our own thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and just, just a couple of words of instruction. First of all, today we will receive the Holy Communion, and we welcome to this table all who are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As you come forward, you will kneel if you can, or stand, and you will receive a piece of bread. Go ahead and eat that, and I will come by with little cups. There are two kinds of drinks on this, this uh, tray. One is uh, a, 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 just a uh, wine, uh, regular wine kind of thing. The other thing is a grape juice. If you need to have grape juice because wine would diminish this celebration, let me know and I'll make sure I give that to you. Um, otherwise, come forward. Uh, we will have our communion.
We have a little tradition at Emmanuel. We stand and clasp the hand, and hopefully everybody in the sanctuary gets a hand to hold during the blessing. No? <laughs> the blessing of the Lord God Almighty, the blessing of Christ, the Lamb who was slain, the blessing of the Holy Spirit of truth be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Wonderful song we are to sing, Go My Children With My Blessing, hymn number 543. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Amen. We at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Marion want to thank you for joining our worship service today. We hope that today's service was both uplifting and has enriched your spiritual life and we would certainly welcome and encourage you to visit one of our services in person. Our services are Sundays at 8 and 10.30 for the traditional worship service and 9.30 for the contemporary worship. We also have a Thursday evening service and the fourth Sunday of each month is our gentle worship service. We also want to thank you for your continued support of our television ministry. Won't you please help us continue spreading the gospel of Christ by sending your donations to Emmanuel Lutheran Television, 241 South Prospect Street in Marion, Ohio, 43302. No gift is too small and will help us continue with our goal of spreading the word of Christ. So until our next broadcast, God be with you till we meet again.